<clears throat> here we have a very large number. Number. If we want to convert to scientific notation, I'm going to start here at the right. I'm going to go forward one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight spaces. Now, I always have to include every non-zero digit number. <clears throat> so for this number, I'm going to put 2.302 because I have to include the 2, and I have to include the space in between the, the 3 and the 2. So this one would be 2.302 times 10, and I went forward 8 spaces. <clears throat> Since my number is a very uh, large number, my exponent is going to be positive. Here, we're trying to solve for x. <clears throat> we're always, we're looking at our two variables. I have a minus 7x and I have a minus 6x. Since they're both negative, the minus 7x is actually the one with the lower value. And that's the one we want to cancel out. So to cancel out a minus 7x, I'm going to add 7x to both sides. A negative 6x plus 7x will just give me x. So now I'm going to bring down the minus 20, bring down my equal sign. The minus 7x and the plus 7x cancel like we wanted. Bring down the minus 14. Now I'm down to a two-step equation. <clears throat> You're always trying to get x variable by itself. That means we're, that's the only thing on one side of the equation. So that means we need to cancel out this minus 20. So to do that, I would add 20. If I do it to one side, I have to do it to the other. So now the chonies would cancel. <clears throat> so now I've isolated the variable or have x by itself. Over here, negative 14 plus 20 is going to give me 6. So x would equal 6. Ordering real numbers. <clears throat> I have five real numbers that I want to put in order from least to greatest. <clears throat> so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to convert them to decimals. So negative 7.2 would just stay negative 7.2. 3 fourths, that's going to change to 0 0.75. Square root of 10, I'm going to calculate that in my calculator. That's going to give me 3.16. Negative square root of 49 is going to give me negative 7. And 3.25 is just 3.25. So if I look at my two negative values, I know that they're, they're going to be my least values. <clears throat> so the, the smaller one is actually going to be negative 7.2, because negative 7.2 is a little bit lower than negative 7. So I'm going to have negative 7.2. Then instead of negative 7, I'm actually going to put the number, the square root of negative 49. Then <clears throat> I have two... Uh, I have 3.16 and 3.25, but 3 fourths is going to be lower than both of those because it's just a decimal. So 3 fourths. And then if I look at my two decimals, <clears throat> lower one is going to be 3.16, which is square root of 10. And then my final number would be 3.25. Write an equations. And this problem says container A has 200 liters of water and is being filled at a rate of 6 liters per minute. Container B has 500 liters of water and is being drained at 6 liters per minute. How many minutes in will it take for the two containers to have the same amount of water? Okay. So I want to write my expressions for both container A and container B. So container A has 200 liters. And it's being filled at a rate of 6 liters per minute. So since it's being filled, that's we're adding 6 liters per minute. Equal to, for container B, it has 500 liters. And here's the keyword, it's being drained. So that means it's decreasing at 6 liters per minute. Important thing to note here. <clears throat> Normally, you you write the variable first. So this equation, if we're going to be on a test or something, you're more likely to see it written with the variable first, saying 6m plus 200, and this is going to be a negative 6m plus 500. 
Okay? So be prepared for that because that's most likely how you're going to see the answer written. <clears throat> Writing the inequalities here, container A has 800 milliliters of water and is being filled at a rate of 6 milliliters per minute. Container B has 1,000 milliliters and is leaking at 10 milliliters per minute. How many minutes in will it take for container A to have the same or more than the amount of water than container B? So again, the first thing I want to do is just write my expressions. So container A, it has 800 and is being filled at a rate of 6 milliliters per minute. <clears throat> so that's 6 milliliters per minute for container A, and it already has 800. For container B, it's leaking, so that's going to be minus 10 milliliters per minute plus the 1,000 that it already has. So we're looking for how many minutes it will take for container A to have the same or more than the amount in container B. Okay. So we want container A to have the same or more than. So that tells it's going to be a less than or greater than or equal to. And it's going to have the same or more than container B. So that means container A is going to have a greater value or a greater amount of water. So our inequality sign would look like that. 